I do um, uh, public art works uh, that are what you consider institutional memorials, monuments. No? But at the same time, I use also uh, my more contemporary art practice into uh, creating works that are more um, what you what you would say uh, more uh, purpose driven. No? I have a very diverse practice. Um, it unfolded this way because I was hoping to um, have the ability to execute my ideas without limitations of funding, institutions, or any restrictions that has to do with uh, certain structures that we have. Uh, my roots are in alternative cinema, uh, which informs my practice as filmmaker. So I have been producing, creating uh, mostly uh, experimental films and documentary, poetic documentaries. But recently, my works um, tackle historical themes with intersections in literature and feminist discourse. My art practice is quite broad. On the one hand, I'm an artist working with different media like photography, textile, sculpture, painting, installation, um, and moving image. Um, but also I have a strong design practice and I usually do editorial design, publications, and visual identity. I was trained as a news photographer. So I started uh, covering the general news, uh, national news uh, for a news magazine. Um, later on, um, I focused on several topics no, in Philippine society and pursued uh, a more sort of specialized path on documentary photography. I'm an illustrator, children's illustrator, uh, editorial cartoonist, and a painter. So my process is very different from each of the, the practices. So I, I jump from one, one uh, medium to, to another. So yung, yung painting process, ko, yung, uh, how I paint, is very direct kasi nga ano uh, ko uh, editorial cartoon is so yung mga metaphor ko yung mga symbolisms mas ano siya mas direct siguro mas dun, nadadala ko siya sa sa painting ko rin so, I come from Mindanao my father is Muslim um, I am not Muslim per se but uh, I carry the memories of my people still it is something that uh, is part of my identity and it is something that I always try to rationalize in my works. Yeah, my creative process, uh, conceptual development and uh, output are actually uh, anchored on three key elements that constitute my art practice. First, my non-figurative uh, abstraction, maintain this critical position that the most important aspect of a work of art is its form. Uh, the way it is made and how the different elements are put together uh, and become the, the work subjective. So um, I use uh, this as a platform for um, doing work that I consider as alternative imaging of history. Because the kinds of work that I do in the classical are the classical monuments. No? These are cast bronze or in stone or in any other alternative materials. No? But they are basically very uh, formalistic and conservative works of uh, public art. And uh, for me, you know, as part of being a um, human rights advocate, no, I, I also wanted to create works that dealt with uh, uh, our painful histories. No? Uh, documentary photography essentially is a part of photojournalism, only that it entails more, I would say, dedication and time um, for observation and at the same time. In documentary photography, I would say there is more emphasis on um, systemic change. Uh, you would want to see an issue or story roll over and hopefully uh, uh, capture it, no sorry, capture it and hopefully see the change that comes right after. Despite this formalist grounding, the conceptual development of my works look to the inward self um, for personal experiences and uh, contextual narratives. This provides me with a logical connection to life in terms of 
art production. I was contemplating on curation as a process, um, not exactly entirely output driven. And it's a process of uh, developing and maintaining connections and relationships. But also for me, it's a process to learn. I looked at the works of the exhibiting artists to see how they struggled with the concept of locating freedom. And then with, I also um, correlated it with my own understanding of the country's um, struggle with freedom also. Uh, so I thought of the main image being this. Uh, they're irregular shapes and different colors um, in a more or less in a continuum. And I wanted to connect to the audience, not in a textual manner. So I decided to um, include my artworks as footnotes to the show because I know that the diverse practices of the artist are dealing with um, issues, um, histories, and then the challenges of image making. And I wanted to pull it to the level of um, the universal, which is the self. So the, the artworks I'll be placing are arranged as archipelagos to probably be a metaphor for the archipelago of selves, which is also an archipelago of a nation, not only geographically, but in terms of experiences, visions, and realities. So we are archipelagic in nature. Uh, there's been a long struggle for freedom in the Philippines. Um, our country officially was declared independent um, not very long ago, more than just around 100 years or more. And, but even before that, there's been a long struggle for it. So I was thinking that there's this constant push to, to find a certain kind of freedom in the Philippines. And that's what I tried to represent in the image, the idea of a, a continuous, sometimes interrupted, but still, and, and it's colorful because it comes from different kinds of people, different areas, um, but overall it's an unbroken push. I, I wanted the global public to, to somehow have an idea on how uh, we as Filipinos uh, image our own personal experiences, our histories into visual narratives. I wanted together with my fellow artists who will be participating, Filipino artists who will be participating in the Biennale to somehow give our international audience an idea on the degree of storytelling, no? the different expressions that we do no? as, as creatives uh, with regards to imaging the times no? or somehow embodying the zeitgeist no? of our particular era. The erasure of women in history has always been prevalent in visual culture. So uh, I reflect on my film's protagonists. Uh, for example, um, the heroines who rose uh, during the Spanish-American period, and um, and also the women uh, who signed a petition to open a night school in 1888, and also the women uh, who were political detainees and they were pregnant during martial law. So it's very important for me to locate those spaces because they were fighting for their freedom by um, just uh, fiercely, fiercely um, telling their stories. So yung, yung artwork ko, ginawa kong para siyang telon. Kumbaga, para din siyang sine na, kumbaga, na nakikita mo lang sa isang, sa isang tingin. Kumbaga, para siyang frozen na, na in time na ito yung slice nung nangyayari sa ating bansa. In the end, parang ano rin yung destruction and chaos din na nangyayari sa bansa. Na lumulubog tayo, nahihirapan tayo. So yun yung gusto kong makita nila dun sa artwork. Um, Guerrera is the working title of a um, single channel video installation which combines uh, you know, parcels and excerpts. So it's going to be like a historical assemblage of women, revolutionary women, uh, in various historical periods in history. Um, this will create, hopefully, a dialogue 
with the historical impact and relevance of the region of Guangzhou, uh, which I learned is also a very important site for resistance and protest uh, that were staged against the dictatorship in the 1880s. Uh, one of my first documentary projects was about former gang members living in one of the biggest, um, I would say, communities or slums in Manila, no? in Tondo, in Baseco. Um, that project, that story, and the community that sort of that welcomed me um, gave, uh, made me realize that um, documentary photography really um, stems, you know, or, or it becomes a wide sort of network of stories after um, you spend a, uh, a specific amount of time with this um, with a specific story or community. My works um, use memory as a method. Uh, I incorporate the memories of the common people uh, in uh, narratives of the nation. I believe that uh, this uh, memories no one's the narratives of um, how we are as a people and it's very much needed of course we say that um, histories are always written by the winners my piece for this exhibition is entitled um, confronting demarcations it is a composition patterned after the literal body of water that surrounds the philippines china Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, it is a statement piece with dimensions of 8 feet in height and 20 feet in length. And this expresses personal sentiments uh, on the current tensions uh, with regards the contested areas and also my interpretation to locations of freedom. It's composed of four videos. So those videos feature, number one, uh, audio recordings of my interviews with people who were in Marawi during the Marawi siege. And they were part of the people who fled Marawi due to the, due to the war. Now, while we hear them speak, those were all phone interviews, what you see on the screen is a kaleidoscopic rendition of the Marawi map wherein we see more of patterns instead of the map itself. Uh, and then we see a uh, scrolling text um, translation, subtitle of the story that they're telling you. And um, these videos are actually screensavers. They look like screensavers. They were meant to act as screensavers. So since 2009 until about 2016, I followed displaced communities. Uh, and the, the experience, their lived experience of um, being called resilient, but also at the same time breaking down the idea of this Filipino resiliency. Um, and in between, or uh, at, at, in parallel, um, while I was doing this, these stories, uh, I've been documenting different uh, spiritual practices, spiritual and cultural practices, as a sign of national identity. I have two, I'm working on two uh, large-scale art installations. One is entitled Desaparecidos, which deals with uh, a um, representation of, uh, of uh, those who were left behind uh, by um, kids, family members, a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a friend, a colleague, uh, of course, a total stranger that we respect now has disappeared uh, within the periods of martial law in the Philippines. For me, it is uh, a very timely uh, reminder no, that this uh, abduction still exists, no? uh, not only in the country but in other uh, parts of the world. No? And that uh, we need to be reminded uh, that uh, this particular painful history from our past has happened and we continue to seek justice. For these people. And thus, I, I created this particular installation to somehow uh, serve as a memory marker. Then there's debugging. It's a more um, light, whimsical take on the idea of how generations would uh, uh, somehow um, pick lies no? uh, uh, as, 
as uh, expressed by a spiral staircase that has several individuals who are in the act of picking lice, L-I-C-E, uh, on the heads of uh, the younger generation. So it's from a young kid all the way to a grandmother. And for me, no, um, they have an open uh, uh, cranium, not similar to uh, biological anatomy models, no? in which um, uh, they are debugging uh, the brain, so to speak. And the installation um, that I'm planning to do is a, uh, it's like a scroll, no? probably printed on a cloth material, and then hanging from, uh, I think, 40, 30, or 40 feet all the way down to um, the floor. Um, and this will include the images that I will be selecting uh, for the series. So I wanted to, to, to focus on the idea, especially within the Asian country, you know, of extended families being their support mechanisms you know, in order for us to survive through you know, whatever you know, your country is going through. And that uh, it is the responsibility of each generation within the family members to somehow debug you know, uh, these lies uh, that are perpetuated by uh, different societies uh, uh, within their particular localities. The, I, I think it was the color that actually came to me first, the idea of different colors in various um, types of spectrums because of the, like a heat map in a way, it, it would shift um, sometimes the center of or areas of struggle would vary. So that was something I initially thought of. And then using how to materialize that um, idea of varying shades and intensities uh, into a form. So that's when I thought of the idea of a continuum where despite interruptions, despite, despite challenges, despite gaps, there's a very clear um, continuity of struggling for freedom. In, in the typography also, I, I tried to um, include that idea with the irregular spacing of the, of the letters. The letter forms are kind of extended, they overlap, they shrink. Um, and in the word mark also, the Philippines, um, some of the letters in the Philippines are small letters, so I also thought of that as an une that unevenness, the underdevelopment. Um, yeah, so I, I tried to translate the concept into varying manifestations in the design. I think freedom is the continuous pursuit of freedom. Um, so the stories that happens uh, at present, or that has happened in the past and it c continues to happen no? uh, at present, uh, this is where we, me as a documentary photographer, focus on the, the continuous action of um, trying to survive the, the vicious cycle of poverty, the continuous um, um, pushback against the aggression, for example, by um, state forces, and at the same time, um, the continuous struggle, for example, of our fishermen. As an artist living in an archipelago, the idea of the conflict escalating to a worst-case scenario is very disturbing to me. Uh, thus, the artwork tries to capture the sentiments of everyone who value peace and freedom as a collective concern that the ongoing dispute might break out into armed conflict. Because um, any instability in the region can upset regular economic uh, activities and derail um, development. So for a painter like myself, um, it posits the question, can dash lines actually be drawn uh, in water? As in art, it seems silly enough. But then again, greed and power can make anyone delusional. There are varying degrees of injustice. But I, but I want the world to see as artists, as thinkers, are always contemplating on that. And truly, uh, the, the practices that we do, the artworks that we do, the pieces we create and imagine are towards that betterment of a situation that is right in front of us. It's not even imagined. It's not even in the books. It's already 
here right now in this area where we are now. Um, there are energies that we know um, can be changed. Uh, for me, these are opportunities for uh, discourse, for conversations uh, that can be started uh, with the introduction of this uh, uh, works uh, within an international arena. Uh, it gives them a glimpse of how um, we can uh, express no, uh, these essential narratives of the times, especially in a world that is confronting you know, AI, that is confronting um, uh, the resurgence of fascism in different parts of uh, uh, conflicts no, around the world. No? Kumbaga, malaman nila yung mga paghihirap na dinadala sa mga ordinaryong Filipino, yung yung ding uh, kumbaga uh, kahirapan sa buhay, saka yung mga kumbaga yung kawalan ng uh, boses ng mga Filipino para ma, may ano na ganito nangyayari sa amin. Gusto kong iparating, kumbaga. At dahil sa palagay ko naman, may mga bansa na nakaka-experience din ng ganitong, ganitong uh, karanasan. Dahil alam ko yung Korea din nakaranas sila ng martial law. So, palagay yung makaka-empathize sila dun sa, sa nangyayari sa atin. The Guangzhou uh, Biennale um, is something that uh, came in the picture without uh, without expectations. But when we said yes to the project, it turned out to be a very fruitful engagement uh, for us being able to showcase our works outside of the Philippines, but more importantly for us to look in further, like to really look in. So my biggest learning, I guess, is when you deal with a global public, the tendency is to really find out your identity and look within and really be sure about what you want to say and the practice that you do want to continue afterwards. So I guess I want the Locations of Freedom to be a beginning for many artists uh, to be able to engage in the global sphere and also to be conscious about unhinging uh, from many, many pressures outside, uh, no matter how hard that would be. When, when the invitation came no, to, to participate in uh, the Biennale, no, and I've, uh, I'm very much aware of the historical significance of the location uh, with regards to people's movement uh, uh, rising up uh, uh, to uh, challenges in our democracy, no, I found it as an opportunity for me to share the Filipino narrative in terms of what we experience as a people, find commonalities within our Asian neighbors in terms of uh, uh, these painful histories now that we needed to share now, and popular struggles that uh, have uh, culminated into successful people power movements. So um, for me, no, this gathering, uh, this invitation to the uh, Guangzhou Biennale no, uh, is uh, a very timely uh, uh, invitation uh, uh, which uh, fits well with my uh, concept of alternative imaging of history and uh, this is our chance no, together with other artists who will be part no, Filipino artists for that matter who will be part of the Biennale uh, to tell our stories no, to share uh, within a wider audience within the Asia Pacific region. I hope the audience understands that in the final exhibition that we're not just showing pieces but we're showing uh, process, uh, a search, I guess, and the pieces are just indexes or byproducts of that process. It is the first time of the Guangzhou Biennale to feature ASEAN countries. It is their initiative to um, encourage uh, participation from uh, ASEAN countries. And I knew that we will be placed uh, with them, but side to side with the other ASEAN countries. And I wanted to be sensitive to their history and um, realities the same way that I want to be responsive to the space as Guangzhou as a space and Asia Culture Center also as a space or a dynamic um, art culture. I'd like to point out that unlike other participating countries uh, who are state-funded, uh, this 
Philippine team for the Guangzhou Biennale still has a lot of optimism and resilience uh, that we are known for as Filipinos as we currently try to find ways to get there and if not, do it by ourselves. The biggest challenge also is funding. I knew that from the beginning, but I saw it as an opportunity to really contemplate and research about uh, the modes of finding resources, to see funding as a modality, I guess, rather than a collection of resources. Trying to, to understand what each artist was going to present so that I, the idea of freedom is not abstract, like it's really basing on what we will present in particular. Um, but there are also many challenges like just getting the show across to Korea. Um, there, are a lot, there are a lot of logistical challenges in production and as an artist myself I can understand that there's a lot of resources involved in creating an artwork, um, producing it, um, transporting it, making sure it's presented in a certain way that is that will make it accessible or decipherable to its audience. There were exciting challenges, mostly philosophical in a sense that how do you really communicate to an audience that are not necessarily informed about your history? How do you connect to people bis, uh, despite the language barrier? Um, but I understood as I go along that those are the easy challenges. The bigger challenges are um, actually, the freedom itself. Uh, my fellow artists have shared their challenges, mainly being uh, challenges in terms of time, space, uh, money. And these are all day-to-day -day challenges that we face. And on a bigger level, it is reflected in preparation for locations of freedom. Where, while we try to do a patchwork funding, uh, it also constricts us in so many ways. Um, these are, again, um, works from 2019. Uh, the uh, Marawi is, uh, the title Marawi Did Not Take Place um, was made in 2019. So I wanted to update it. I want to update it. And um, the challenge is to find um, perhaps the, the right uh, way you know, to update it. Uh, Although one part of me um, also realized it does not need updating because the problem remains. The people of Marawi still cannot go back to their homes. And so it stays as is. Four years after, uh, no, sorry, seven years after, uh, still couldn't go back to their homes. Personally, to visit, revisit this painful, horrible, unphotographable, um, you know, um, historical circumstances is very difficult. And to present it um, to the, you know, to the viewers is a big challenge. Uh, but logistically, also the time and uh, the time to meditate is something that I would would love to have. But thanks to the, the, the opportunity that this is going to be a collective presentation with fellow artists. So I hope that all together we will be able to send a strong and unique, um, you know, uh, immersive message as a group of artists who are striving to, you know, um, revisit and to reclaim locations of freedom, not just in our country, but all over the world. Well, um, as an artist, I associate the theme of locations of freedom with living a better life, um, such as being close to activities which make my life experiences uh, richer and much fuller. Um, another is being closer to family and living in a nature setting where my heart and mind are mostly at peace.
So in a sense, um, and specifically, uh, since I was born uh, in the island, it also means I have an affinity to be surrounded by the sea. Uh, the sand and the sea have since become my uh, comfort from constant challenges that life throws at you and from the toils of uh, working in the academe as a, a university professor. Uh, location of freedom for me is a concept where heaven on earth is, albeit metaphorically. I think um, all our um, ideations and understandings of our personal um, selves are always in relation to what's outside. And a lot of times, the outside defines the inside um, because uh, there are channels of freedom that are not available. So I was thinking of the locations of freedom for a long, long time. In my writing, in my painting, in my embroideries, I was always asking how to be more free. Free in terms of movement, we, in terms of speaking up as a woman in a society such as ours in the Philippines, free in maybe mobility with my body, with my sight also. Uh, I'm looking at freedom as an overall thing, um, to be able to move and to speak and to use your senses without restrictions. In image making, locations of freedom, I think, um, at least for me, uh, it's the intersection of the physical space and the lived experience of a community. For example, um, I mentioned documenting the former gang members. Uh, for me, Tondo and Baseco in general, or at least the heart of Manila, had a different um, image in my head until I, I spent time there. So for me, um, even if this area is sort of cliched to be, you know, a gangland, very dangerous place. Their own freedom revolves around that um, sort of reality. They don't care if, they, if people feel that, you know, they're a dangerous community. But when you spend time with them, that's the only time that you would hear how, uh, how they live up to, or how they push back to this sort of cliche or um, image that people perceive of them. So for me, that is an actual act of freedom in a space. Biennales are, um, Biennales are also a conflicted space, art space. And um, it's always uh, productive to question these things. Uh, so audiences alike and artists um, really gather to have dialogues uh, about these notions that, continue, that are still being um, questioned uh, to date. To quote the revolutionary uh, Lorena Barrio, she said, the Filipino women's place is in the struggle. So chronicling uh, the story of women during these times of crisis is in itself an act of resistance. So this is something that is not just, you know, um, determined or confined to our country, but this is happening all over the world. And I hope that my piece will uh, resonate to them. The impetus to resist comes from a deep uh, notion of belonging. So belonging to a place, belonging to a space, to a people. So uh, that to, to, to see uh, locations of freedom or resistance as wars this way, is to understand that these things might never end. You know, the, the conflicts, they might never end because the people will always fight for what they love, you know, for the spaces that um, hold uh, who they are, for everything that um, makes person, uh, people. So as long as um, history continues and um, there are oppressive uh, systems that keep on um, 
divesting a people of what is owed to them, these um, notions of resistance will keep on uh, continuing, will continue. The locations of freedom is universal in many ways, however specific it is to our stories. Um, when I conceptualized the theme, I, it was also in conversation with uh, my Korean colleagues because I know that the Gwangju Biennale represents freedom and democracy as well. And I know that they're celebrating their anniversary. Uh, reviewing the history of the Biennale itself is interesting because part of their history are the frictions uh, among artists. Uh, there was even an anti Biennale, anti Gwangju Biennale Biennale, <laughs> like in the past. So it has a strong, um, strong spirit of people, uh, intentions, but also in harmony. Um, so I know that uh, it's something that we can relate to instantly. Uh, even um, artists from other countries outside of Asia will easily understand freedom because it's something universal. But more importantly, it also honors the space where we are brought. Uh, it also honors maybe our diasporic communities. There are a lot of um, Filipinos also in Gwangju and entire South Korea. So basically that, it's really in conversation with their realities and histories and ours. And uh, I would like to believe always that, you know, um, and I've shared this before, na, that uh, when the truth is under siege na, and the press is pinned down by the state, uh, the arts become our second line of defense. Na. How powerful this medium is uh, for social change. Na. And uh, we are just glad that we are provided this opportunity to share our stories na, uh, on an international arena.